Hello everybody, what is going on? Welcome to part 30 of our Matplotlib tutorial series. In this part, what we're going to be talking about is 3D scatter plots. So, um, with this code, we can actually use quite a bit of uh, the previous code. The only thing we're going to get rid of is plotting for the wireframe. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just, we'll just comment this out for now. And the next thing that I want us to do is we need some more variables. So I'm going to, well, yeah, I guess we'll just do X. Let's copy this line at least. Copy, paste. And in fact, let's copy this whole thing. Copy, paste. And then the X will just make these all, whoops, make these all negatives. Negative, 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 negative. Just make all these negatives so they're kind of like in their own little place basically. Negative, 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 and negative, and one more negative. Okay, good enough. So uh, with scatter plots, it's really quite simple. You can uh, basically, we'll use the first set first and then we'll come on and use the second set last. Uh, you can do something like this ax1.scatter. And then you pass the X, the Y, the Z. And that's really all you have to do. So first we can bring that one up. And so now we've got these the scatters. And another little cool thing, I mean, you can you can kind of tell, but uh, the plots that are like further away from being the closest, I guess. The closest ones are totally filled, right? They have a solid alpha. And the ones that are further back have a lesser alpha. And so, and then as you move it, that starts changing. So it kind of gives you a little more feeling of depth uh, to the to the charts. Um, and we can kind of do the same thing that we've done before with the zooms and all of that to kind of look at these plots and all of that kind of stuff. Um, otherwise, everything pretty much remains the same. So let's close out of this. And uh, what we can do though, is we can scatter another bit here. So like we can do ax1.scatter and then do x2, y2, z2, and run that. And we can do that, and we can see there's kind of two bodies here, but uh, we don't see any difference. But what we can do, just like we can do with any of the scatter plots, is we can change the color. So we could say c equals um, r, and then c equals k, and then we can even we can change some stuff so you can say like marker so right now the marker is an o like that um so comma marker o but you can like we were talking about before you can make them whatever you want so we can make them stars for all that matters so now they're stars some are black the others are red that was a bad idea on my part my bad guys uh so let's do blue and red something a little or let's do green and red just something that's obvious difference sorry for the colorblind folks out there still can't really see much of a difference here we might want to make the marker size a little bigger but the other thing we can do stars are just hard to see so let's do like O again and O. let's try it one more time there we go so those are easier to see so we'll stick with those anyway so this is kind of our way of being able to compare three dimensions and maybe see the difference between three dimensions uh, of data here. So anyways, uh, those are three dimensional scatter plots for you. Not really too much more to it. It's a lot like a scatter plot, only with another dimension. So uh, that's it for this tutorial. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next tutorial.